What is up guys? So in today's video, we're gonna be wrenching on my dad's 2011 Harley Davidson Street Glide and uh, we're gonna be adding performance headers to his bike. So real quick, currently he has a pretty much a stage one. He has a high flow air cleaner and slip on mufflers, but he's still rocking the stock Harley Davidson headers from 2011. So we're gonna go ahead and change those out. So he decided to go with the SNS power tune dual headers so i'll have a link to them down in the description if you guys are interested for them on your twin cam so let's get the bike up on the lift and let's get a wrench in all right the first two to three things we're going to do real quick before we go crazy and all out and start on everything is we're gonna lose the saddlebags. That way it makes it easier for getting the slip-ons off and just the exhaust in general. You don't wanna bump into those. And secondly, we're gonna be pulling the main fuse for the bike, which is very important. And number three is we're gonna go ahead and take some WD-40 or PB Blaster and just kind of spray up where the slip-ons slip onto the headers. Uh, mostly because over time they heat up and carbon builds up and they become a pain in the ass to get off with wiggling them. So we're going to spray them up ahead of time so then that way hopefully by the time we get to the part of taking those off it can penetrate and make our lives a heck of a lot easier. Alright so now that we got the slip on sprayed up, main fuse pulled, saddlebags removed, we're going to be working on taking these slip-ons off the bike. So these two bolts for our setup is going to be a half inch. And the main clamp that connects to the header is going to be a 9 16 So at this point, once the clamp's loosened up and the half inch bolts are out of the front, we can go ahead and wiggle the slip-on off. And like I said, this is a pain in the butt. So that's why we went ahead and lubed everything up beforehand. All right, so at this point, he's going to go ahead and start to loosen up all the hose clamps that hold the heat shield on. And that's going to be a 5 16 socket. And there's going to be roughly six hose clamps total on this side of the header. So in order to get the heat shields off the front portion of the header, you're going to have to go ahead and remove your right side floorboard, which is going to be a 5 16 Allen. And once you remove the floorboard, then you can take off the front heat shields of the header. And then also that's how you'll have room to get your old headers off and your new headers on. For this front floorboard bolt, there's going to be, at least on our application, there's a nut on the back side, which is going to be a 9 16. All right, so now that the heat shields are completely off, the next order of business is going to be taking off our side cover here and locating the O2 sensors, which they're going to be the gray and the black. Just make a note which one's the front O2, which one's the rear. It's pretty simple when you go to plug them up because there's a gray plug and a black plug. But when you go to reinstall them, which we'll talk about here in a second, once we get there, you got to make sure the O2 sensors are in the right position. Now would be a time also to take pictures of how the wires are routed, where there's a good zip tie and, and such, because we're going to be cutting these zip ties to free up the O2 sensor. So when we take the headers off, it will come off as one. Um, so now is the time to take the pictures so you know how everything's routed and where it's secured. But that's what we're going to do right now. All right, so now that our O2 sensors are all freed up, the next three bolts we have to get loose to remove the old headers are, you're gonna have two nuts on the back of the jug and the front of the jug up in there. Um, those are gonna be half inch nuts where the crossover is. Hang on a second. There's a half inch nut right there that we're gonna have to take off to take that clamp off. And then on this bike, there is a bracket right here, which I didn't see what the size is yet, but I'll keep you in tune for that. And uh, that's the last mounting point for the stock headers. So I'm gonna go ahead and break everything free 
and get everything loose and I'll pick it back up when the headers are ready to come off. So at this point, we got the crossover pipe off. Like I said, it was just that one half inch bolt there. And then I got this center bolt out, which was a 9 16th. So the only thing that are left are the four uh, header bolts or nuts, which like I said earlier, those are half inch. So let's get those off. Also, when these are very rusted, do yourself a favor and spray them up. You do not want to snap the studs from the motor because that will be a very expensive fix. So just take your time and spray them up. It's almost like they've been on the bike for 11 years or something. All right, after fighting tooth and nail with these old rusty nuts, the old headers are finally off. So at this point, we're most likely going to have to take these clips off and these exhaust flanges because we're going to be reusing those. So the same way they come off, you're going to put them on in reverse order. The clip's going to come off first, then the flange, and when you go to reinstall them, obviously the flange goes on first, then the clip. And then the other thing that we're going to have to do is take the O2 sensors out and uh, just with a notepad or whatever, just make note on our bike, the gray is going to be the front and the black is going to be the rear header. But just make sure you double check yours and that way you know. These headers have a B and G imprinted on the header themselves, black and gray. but I didn't check the new ones and I don't believe that they are labeled. So you just want to make sure because otherwise you're going to mess up your bike a little bit. It's going to run weird. So just make note of that and you'll be A-OK. -okay. And as you can see, we just got that clip right off with a flat tip screwdriver. All right, so both clips are off, both flanges are off. The next order of business is getting the O2 sensors off. So good thing I turned the camera off for that little bit because we fought freaking tooth and nail on the gray one just to break it free. It took lots of penetrating oil, some heat, and a pipe wrench because even with the heat and the penetrating oil, we were unable to break it free. And then what happened? What ended up happening was the uh, nut itself started collapsing on itself or like stripping the corners out with the wrench because it just wasn't budging. So we actually just kind of gave up and went to a pipe wrench and finally, luckily, we were able to break it free. So it took penetrating oil, heat, and a pipe wrench to get that off. So if you're working on a 10 plus year old motorcycle trying to get these off, just be prepared for war. But they are off, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull them the rest of the way out. But real quick, I just wanted to show you guys the headers that we went with here. They're the SNS Power Tune dual headers, as I was saying earlier. So that's them in the box. So we're gonna take a couple minute break here, figure out where all the new hardware goes, and we're gonna start reinstalling the O2 sensors and go from there. All right, so we actually ran into a roadblock here while we were looking over our hardware. As you can see, we got to use these like bunghole adapters um, because we're using the stock O2 sensors. As you can see, this is what we need. We need one to go from a wide band to narrow band O2 sensor. And as you can see, this one's threaded. Well, the other one they sent us is not threaded whatsoever. So we are currently on a roadblock until we can try to get another one that is uh, from wide band to narrow band. So the only other thing we could pretty much do tonight is remove the old exhaust gaskets and just install the new ones. But other than that, we are SOL for the night. All right, so while we're in the parts delay here with the O2 dilemma, the SNS header kit came with a new transmission support bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and work on taking this off, which this is going to be a quarter inch Allen. This is the problem of working on a 10 plus year old bike. And 
All right, so that now that's off. And we're gonna try to go ahead and see if we can't get new hardware because you don't wanna put that crusty uh, bolt back on your nice Harley. So another thing we're gonna try to knock out while we gotta wait for Harley to see if they have that O2 adapter is we're gonna work on taking our old exhaust gaskets out and replacing them with a the new one. So the easiest thing is just taking like a pick and kind of just digging in. So the other thing we're finding out about working on a older bike that has been set in its ways for 20,000 plus miles is these exhaust gaskets are like glued onto the heads. As you see, we're struggling here, so we're gonna fast forward till those are out. So we got the old exhaust gaskets out after fighting them a little bit, and we got the new ones just pressed in there. Um, the only thing that you wanna watch with that is you don't wanna crumble it up or crush it pushing it in. You wanna make sure it kinda goes in uniform or else you'll have an exhaust leak. And as you saw, he just shoved a little rag in there because like you know, we have to wait till tomorrow to hopefully get those adapters for the O2 sensors. So we're just shoving some towels in there just so foreign objects don't get in there because that would not be good. So, all right, so we're gonna pick this up tomorrow or whenever we can get the parts to continue the job. The next day. What is up guys, welcome back. So it is the next day. Harley Davidson did not have what we needed, but fortunately enough, we know some people and we are able to tap that one out that was not threaded. So therefore we can presume with the install today and get this all wrapped up. So we're gonna go right into transferring the O2 sensors from the old header into the new header. All right, so like I said, you wanna always note what O2 sensor is the upstream and what O2 sensor is the downstream. So I'm gonna be doing the gray one first, which is the upstream. Now what is very important is that when you do remove the old O2 sensors, you wanna apply just a tad bit of anti-seize to the threads. That way you are able to get them out in the future if need be. And you don't need a lot because anti-seize is very, very messy. And as well as the O2 sensors, you want to make sure to apply some anti-seize to the bunghole adapters, as I like to call them, just in case you ever want to add a wide band O2 sensor. Um, that way these adapters come out relatively easy because you don't want to have to buy a new tuner or something and then get to the point where you can't get them back out. All right, now that we got these O2 sensors installed, we can go back and install that new transmission uh, bracket slash support for the header system. So to put this bracket on, he's gonna be just applying just a little bit of Loctite to those bolts. And he's going to go ahead and just get both of them started by hand before he goes in and tightens them the rest of the way. So now we're going to be applying the exhaust flange. Cutouts go up. And then the retaining clip that keeps the flange from falling off. And sometimes you can just wiggle these on, other times you might need a flat tip to assist. And once they click on there, you are good to go. And then you can then take the headers over and get ready to install them. Get that one. So once you get the headers pressed in, 
you want to start your exhaust flange nuts and you want to both start them by hand as well as make sure that you aren't make sure to screw them in kind of equally you don't want to over tighten one and have the other one still loose so at this point we have our exhaust flanges started but they're still relatively loose we went ahead and routed our o2 sensors back to their home position and got them plugged back in and then we also went ahead and started this uh little transmission support bracket for the header and we got that started but not fully tight until we go ahead and tighten up our exhaust flange. The next step is to go ahead and tighten up these exhaust flanges and we can come back to the support bracket and then work on our crossover pipe. Alright so I just went ahead tightened up the front and rear exhaust flanges all the way so we can go ahead and finish tightening up our support bracket. All right, now the support bracket's all tight. And like I said, the O2 wires and everything are routed, plugged in, the exhaust manifold and the flanges are all tight. So now we can work on the crossover. All right, so we went ahead and we had to change out this bracket completely. So we had to take two Allens out of the top and then obviously that uh, center bolt was already out from taking the old header off. So SNS supplied a whole new bracket and new Allen bolts for the top. So we went ahead and did that. We needed some assistance from the scissor lift to kind of just hold the crossover pipe in the correct position to align all three holes at once. So we moved right along. We kind of got to slip on, slipped on. All we have to do yet is throw this clamp on for the crossover pipe to the main header and then add the other slip on to the other side. And then at that point, we can kind of wipe everything down to try to get all the fingerprints and the oil off of everything. And then we can start the bike and uh, check everything out, tighten anything up if needed, and then we can install our heat shields. All right, so at this point, we got the other slip on slipped on and we are just going ahead and measuring three our slip-ons just to make sure that they're at the right Six depth three from the back Six and then and once we figure that they are even we can go ahead and smug them up alrighty so at this point we got the crossover clamp up there fully tight we got the exhaust clamp for the crossover tight um, both slip-ons are on Remeasured and everything is tight. So at this point, we are going to wipe the surfaces down, reinstall the main fuse, fire up the bike, make sure we don't have any exhaust leaks anywhere, and then also we want to heat up the exhaust gaskets a little bit. And then once the bike cools down, just double check those exhaust flanges because sometimes when the gasket heats up you can get a little bit of play in them so we would just want to retighten those and then double check everything and then from that point we can reinstall the heat shields and call it a day all right so i wiped everything off to try to get as much fingerprints and oil off as we possibly can but it is still normal for the pipes to smoke a little bit to burn off all the remaining oil but at this point we can go ahead and try to start her up. And while the bike is running, it is good to kind of work your way from the headers all the way around and just kind of feel around all of the connecting points. Make sure you don't have any exhaust leaks and also putting your ear by. Oh god, we didn't hear. What? Yeah. So we actually just did find a one exhaust leak, which is at that crossover pipe. So we're just gonna have to go ahead and tighten that up a little bit. Put it warm up.
right, so at this point, we just pretty much heat cycled everything. Like I said, we are down to just that leaking a little bit. So we're just gonna kind of readjust the clamp and tighten it up just a little bit more. And then uh, we're gonna check it again. All right, so we let the bike cool off a little bit readjusted our clamp down there and tightened it up a little bit more. I double checked the exhaust flanges and we went around and checked all the other bolts after the heat cycle to make sure everything was tight. So let me go fire it up again and uh, we'll give you guys some revs here. So that's going to be a double thumbs up for that. So the only thing that is left to do is obviously let the bike cool down, install the heat shields, and uh, we can wrap it up and that's it. So we went ahead and put the hose clamps through the heat shield and now it's nice if you have an extra pair of hands to just kind of get all the hose clamps over the header. All right, so we got all of our heat shields installed, the floorboard reinstalled, side covers, saddle bags. So this is the finished product. As you can see, real simple. Nice little SNS badge there. And as you guys saw, she sounds pretty good, which is a hell of an improvement over just the Reinhardt slip-ons. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys if you guys are looking to install headers or slip-ons onto your bike. Um, we pretty much went step-by-step -step with everything. So if you guys lasted this long in the video, make sure to smash that like button, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so that way you guys get notified when I post new videos like this one. Make sure to ride safe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace!